you know, a very dangerous football team and a good football team, not just dangerous but good. Uh, but I thought going in the games that special teams and defense would be the difference in the ball game. I thought the offenses were kind of offset, and I think um, that was the difference in the game. I thought our defense got some big stops early in the first half. Uh, we were able to capitalize, separate a little bit. You know, you never feel safe against anybody, but especially Texas Tech. And then special teams, you know, I think a couple of players of the game, Spencer Evans, uh, we thought we had to be great in kickoff team, great in punt team. Spencer did a, just a tremendous job of placing the ball all over the field. Our coverage guys, Tootie, uh, Kendall Ehrlich, some of those guys, pull them were just outstanding. And then Drew punting the ball. I mean, just true freshman, you know, played like a seventh year pro. I mean, flipped the field, punted from our end zone. They start the drive at their 38, you know, and then had two other punts later in the game that were just tremendous. And we had great, great coverage down the field. So those things you never, you know, you never take lightly because they can certainly determine the, the outcome of the football game. So um, those, are, those are two guys that really made a big difference in the game the other day. Going to Kansas this week, you know, anytime you go on the road, play a conference opponent, I think you can look across the nation and see that it's, um, you know, it's tough. It's just, that's just the way it is. You know, it's just, it's always tough. Doesn't matter what's going on prior. You got to go win for that 60 minutes. Uh, we've been there. You know, we've, we've, uh, been witness to it, you know, on the on the good side barely, and then on the bad side a few times. Every home team won in our conference last week, and you know it's just it's it's a special deal when you can go on the road and win. So that's that's what we got to do this week. We got to keep improving. Uh, we got some guys that are playing up at a pretty good level. Those guys have to stay at that level and and keep increasing because you know once you know once you uh, hit one home run, they want you to hit two. You know, you hit two, they want you to hit three. So you can't ever take a step backwards. You just got to keep going forward. And uh, I like our football team. I like their passion. I like their energy. I like their intensity. And I like their toughness. Okay. Um, John Warner, Waco True. All right. Uh, it seems like after every game, you mention it, uh, <clears throat> shock, Seth, the offensive line. It, is this as good an offensive line as you've been around? And what are some of the reasons that they are so good? Uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say that it's it's definitely the most experienced offensive line that, that we've been around. Uh, I mean, and what makes them so good is that right there, you know, experience. I mean, you like I've always said, you can have all the money in the world, but you can't buy experience. you got to live, taste, and breathe it. And uh, these guys have all played a bunch of football and played a bunch of good football, won a bunch of big games helped us want to be, win a bunch of big games. And, and they still have a lot of hunger and desire, you know, and I think that comes from great leadership from Coach Clements and then, you know, from Durango. Uh, Pat Colbert's been tremendous. You know, Muir, Broxton, you know, uh, all those guys. You know, Kyle's an underclassman. Dez, of course, jumps in there and plays some. But uh, those are all old guys. You know, we got four of those five guys or, or really five out of six are fifth-year senior guys. You know, so they're not they're not kids. They're not boys. They're men, and uh, and that's the way they got to play, and that's the way we treat them. You know, we don't treat them like a kid. We don't treat them like a boy. We treat them like a man, and they they've responded that way. Coach Tim O'Donnell, Channel Twenty Five. Uh, we got to see Seth run the ball a little bit more on Saturday than we had in the non-conference play. In terms of his talent with that experience, is this maybe the most dynamic offense that you've had that you've had the ability to coach here? <laughs> You know, I, th I think it's a little early to start, uh, you know, jumping out there and, you know, feeling really, really comfortable because you can't, you know, I mean, you know, we know and we understand and we know uh, inclement environments, inclement weather, you know, uh, mishap here or there, and, you know, flip the whole thing. So really what, what we're trying to do is just be steady. You know, we want to be steady. Seth, that certainly adds a dimension to us that, that we can use if we feel like we, we have to or we need to, uh, don't like to. Uh, but, you know, we felt like we had to and needed to the other day because of the opponent, because they're a team that can score. And, you know, you can't have three and outs. You know, you play Texas Tech, you get three and outs, you're going to get beat. You know, so you gotta, you got to sustain drives. you got to keep the ball. And when you got it, you got to score touchdowns. And so he allows us the ability to do that and then – you know, we still haven't thrown the football, you know, like uh, like we're capable of yet. Sean Gagey, KWTX. Coach, you talked about how 
it's tough to go on the road in this conference, but right now I think you guys are a 42-point favorite going there. Does that blow your mind that you guys are favored, you know, six days in advance by six touchdowns? Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's just our conference that it's tough to go win in on the road. I think it's just across America. And I, I don't really know what happened last weekend, but I bet if you checked, uh, you know, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, the SEC, the ACC, the AAC, you know, Conference USA, whatever, I would bet that 75% that of the home teams won the games. You know, close. Now, I don't know. I mean, I might just be throwing numbers out there, but I just know what it's like. So, you know, if we can, if we can get out of there seven to six, boy, I'll get on that plane just happy as I can be because th this is similar to the way it's set up now to every game's a playoff game. You know, you win, you advance. You win, you advance. You win, you advance. If you don't win, then you got it. Then you're you're really fighting an uphill battle. So all we're trying to do is win. Bryce Cherry, Waco Trib, uh, Coach, piggybacking on what Tim's question a little bit. Uh, in terms of Seth's running, um, it's you mentioned it gives you an added dimension. I mean, it seemed like back when you guys had Robert, I mean, he had, he was the home run threat. How does he compare to Robert as a as a runner? You know, we ran Robert as a junior in ten. We didn't really run him much in eleven when he was a senior. Uh, a lot of the runs that he did were. You know, just ab living. I mean, you know, play would break down. He'd take off and and make runs. And we, you know, we diagrammed a few, but we knew he was an X factor. You know, and and Seth has that ability. You know, he's got that X factor ability. Robert was a, you know, on off again three or four year starter at that time. You know, Seth had five games. You know, so um, I just think as he becomes, you know, more aware, um, you know, I, I think his. Um, you know his his a talent level and ability level is 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 pretty high sky high honestly you know he's a guy that can really do a lot of things and he's the thing i like about him is is his mentality toward really being a complete player you know he's 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 not a he's not a get happy guy you know he's a get me better guy and that that's what i like about him hey art suzanne halliburton with the statesman um on Seth's running, he ran 12 times for 81 yards on Saturday. What makes you, what, how many carries make you uncomfortable? <laughs> I mean, don't like, you know, really um, one. I mean, just, you know, you, don't, you really don't want to run that guy, you know, a whole bunch because we're, we're not really a running quarterback running offense. You know, we can be, um, but we don't, don't really want to be. Uh, we know we're going to have to be in some situations. It might be this Saturday. You know, I mean, we certainly have the threat there if we need to do it, as everybody does. I mean, everybody poses that threat. Uh, but, you know, we just happen to have a guy that can fulfill that threat. And so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep his runs limited. 12 is a really high number. I mean, it really is, Susan. That's, I honestly didn't know. I thought he had eight or nine. But 12 is, you know, probably six more than, than what we would want. You know, if he has four to six a game. You know, I'm, I'm figuring three of those are on his own and three may be called. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider Art. Can you talk about uh, Xavier, just kind of his play at cornerback, and then Trayvon Blanchard. Does he give you maybe a dynamic quality that maybe – I'm not saying you were lacking, but maybe a more dynamic player at that position? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got good speed on the field defensively. You know, I think we're, we're to that point. Uh, I think we've, uh, as a staff, have done a great job recruiting guys that, that fit uh, Coach Bennett and their, that staff system, you know, and what they're looking for. And honestly, in the Big 12, it's all about speed, you know, because uh, you got to cover space, you got to cover the field, and you got to cover people. Um, X is, you know, his two year starter now, you know, high school QB. Just gets better every time he walks out on the practice field. Very diligent, uh, very disciplined, very coachable. And, you know, was in, a, in a tough situation, you know, a lot of times he's a boundary corner, he's locked down, he's on an island. So he's, you know, he's done a great job. Trey uh, Blanchard, you know, we've always known Blanch would, would be a really good player. You know, it just, it's a maturity deal. You know, he's got to go through the, the bad to get to the good and just understand his role in the system and be disciplined in what he's doing. And, and then you back it up with ability, you know, and that's where he's at now. He's a playmaker. The guy's long, you know, and he can run and, and he can make plays. I was a little... You know, surprised that he didn't make that play in space the other day on the fourth down. But, you know, um, he'll, he'll make that more than not. He's, he's a really good player, and he brings a good dimension to us. 
Nick Canizales, KC, and Coach Stain with the defense. Another uh, another great job by the defense for us, forcing turnovers, two interceptions, two fumbles. How important is that every single game? And uh, you know, how impressed are you that the, they keep forcing those turnovers? Uh, it's, it's gigantic. You know, I mean, if you win the turnover battle, you win the field position battle, uh, normally you're going to have the momentum and you're going to win the game. That's usually the three things to determine the game. So, um, you know, it, it's it's big. You know, actually, on one of the interceptions, we lost 23 yards, but. You know, that's, we're not going to tell a guy not to catch it because, you know, he may catch it and run it back for a touchdown. You never know. So we're not, you know, we're not going to play, you know, scared back there and, you know, uh, work it that way. You know, if you can get the ball, get it. You know, if it's in the air, it's ours. So, um, but no, those, really the turnovers in the first half, I mean, old Ryan Strip and, and recovery right there, I think it was a, might have been 21 14 ball game time. They're driving. And, you know, we get the ball, go down, make it 28 14. Then I think we get another pick. I think X gets a pick. And then we go up 35-14. And it just flipped the, it flipped the whole game. You know, we, we let one get away right there before half. That's really my fault. You know, I, we got a little – I got a little conservative, you know, um, and, and shouldn't have, you know, in hindsight. You know, just we should have cut loose, should have played, should have tried to been up 35 at half. Coach John Morris, Baylor Radio. Uh, Mr. Dave's next. Yes, sir. Dave. Yeah, you know, he, he's a great special teams player. He's on all our special teams. If, you know, if we were picking special teams captains, which, you know, we don't pick captains. I, I make everybody a captain that's a senior and gets through our program and graduates so they can put it on the resume uh, because I think it's deserved. Uh, but, you know, he would be a guy that would be there. He's done a great job for the last couple of years. He's actually in some packages defensively to where him and Blanchard are on the field at the same time, so it's not really like he's a backup, Dave. It's just uh, it's a different defensive package that allows, you know, guys of that uh, skill level to get on the field at the same time. And, and Pat's a playmaker. I mean, I said it after the game the other night. He's, he's very similar to, to Taylor. You know, what makes Taylor so great is that he's very instinctive. You know, he, he reacts extremely quickly. And, um, you know, Pat's, Pat's got that same quality, qualities. That's John Morris, Baylor Radio. You're up to number three in the nation in the AP poll this week. Uh, in your mind, what are the benefits when you have, you know, ranking that's that high? You know, I, it, it's, I think there's a lot of benefits, quite honestly, uh, and not to do with anything, you know, as far as national image or anything. It's it, to do with, uh, you know, the playoff committee. You know, when it gets to that, I mean, they're going to start their own, you know, ranking. But, you know, if you, if you start high – you know, you got a better chance to stay high. You know, I mean, we, we've done it both ways. You know, we've started out of the top 25 and ended up in the top 10. You know, if you start in the top four or five and, and you do what you should do, which is just win in advance, win in advance, win in advance, then you got a chance to, to be in those final four when it's all said and done. So you're not on the outside looking in, you're on the inside seeing who's coming in with you. So I, I think that's the biggest advantage. Coach, uh, J.W. Ketchum just tweeted a few minutes ago that he's no longer enrolled here. Is, mm -hmm. it, was that a decision on your guys' part or him, or, or were you guys expecting and hoping to have him back next year? You know, I, I think there's a chance he could be back next year. Just uh, growing pains this year, you know, didn't allow him to um, stay at our university. He's a good kid. You know, really hope the best for him. Coach, uh, Seth Russell actually knows David Beattie pretty well. He was a Kansas yeah. commit, I believe, yeah. back in the day. You know, is this something for him maybe that he, you know, he's excited about playing, you know, against a team that he, you know, could have played for or anything like well, that? Well, I mean, we – honestly, if uh, – and I know David really well. You know, he's a great coach, done a great job. A uh, bunch of guys on their staff. You know, Tubido, the, the defensive line coach. Uh, actually, Gary Kubiak's son coaches for him, knew him when – he played at Colorado State, and he was in Houston at the same time we were at Houston. And Kenny Perry coaches, you know, co-defense coordinators, high school coach with TCU before he went there. So been around those guys a bunch, and uh, they're, they're really good football coaches, and they're really good people. Um, you know, they've been through four coaches in four years up there. Like I was going to say, if Turner had stayed the coach there, you know, we probably wouldn't have Seth Russell right now. You know, that's, that's how he became available, quite honestly. And uh, – because he was always on our radar, but, you know, he had committed to him, and that was in the kind of the transition with Robert staying or going. So we were, 
you know, kind of slow playing a quarterback move there. But Seth was certainly a guy that we always wanted and, and felt like uh, he would fit our system. But I, I don't think – you know, the thing about Seth, I don't, I don't think it has any meaning to him. I mean, he's a lot like me and a lot like our football team. We're just trying to prove we belong every week. You know, there's a lot of people that don't want us to belong, don't feel like we belong. Uh, you know, we're just trying to prove we belong. Art, did y'all come out pretty healthy the last game? Is there a chance Bonds could be back, Byron? I think I think I, I'm really uh, I think Bonds could have played the other night. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, we got some guys that are banged up a little bit. Just which goes with getting into four or five games. Uh, I think there's a chance Schaefer could be back this week. Uh, thought he thought he might could have gone the other day, but you know it's Tuesday practice wasn't wasn't great. He's real sore Wednesday. But I think everybody else is just just minor. So we've been been very very fortunate on that end. Art, uh, not to compare Corey to the other receivers, but he's had twenty four catches, eleven touchdowns. So that means he's been tackled thirteen times. Do you ever remember a guy putting up numbers like that? And and just I guess his ability to score touchdowns that that. Often. You know, I, w I would almost debate the tackle 13 times. I mean, yeah, he stepped out of bounds, you know, two or, th two or three times. He's a hard guy to get off his feet now, and that's really kind of what makes him – that makes him uh, that makes him different, you know, because he's he's very uh, uh, very capable with the ball in his hands. Um, and to me, it's all about – it's about passion and energy and uh, burning inside. It's what, what kind of separates him. It's like I tell him he's not happy unless he's mad, you know, so uh, – that's when he's the happiest, when he's the maddest. He's a great football player and a great leader for our team. All right, let's get after the Hawks. Thank you.